Greetings friends and welcome to the two-part tutorial on cars slash animal mounts. So in the first part of this video friends we're going to go about how to enter a car and of course exit it. Uh, the cool features that you have with the car is that meow, you can do things like handbrake turns, scurry. it's also a physical object so it can like go over ramps and stuff, Whoa. Scoo, 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 scoo. Um, this is actually super super fun um, and not too difficult um, so I'll go over how to actually build the car logic design your own little car and um, then of course make it so that your characters can get into them and drive around and have some fun I'm actually having a lot of fun anyway the next thing that I'm going to show you how to do is um, have an animal mount so animal mounts work a bit differently they don't have handbrake turns and that sort of stuff uh, but they do have the ability to uh, jump for example they work slightly differently so they don't drift or whatever there's like a little bit more sort of control when you're using an animal mount um, and yeah of course you can jump over obstacles and it's just got a slightly different vibe um, but the logic between them is very similar it's just got a slight uh, a slight tweak here and there um, and you know the animations are a little bit different there's a little bit more animation when it comes to animal mounts uh, but that sort of makes it really fun and interesting um, so yes friends I hope that you find this useful and uh, if you aren't interested in the sculpting sculpting sections you can of course skip ahead and just go to the logic sections but if you want to you know have some tips about how to make a silly little golf cart like this or a crazy boar like that um, you can of course stick around and watch the entire video Without further ado, friends, let's get stuck in. A whoop whoop. First up, we're going to start off with designing our vehicle. If you've already got one in mind, you can, of course, skip ahead. But for those who are interested in seeing a bit of uh, sculpting, let's get stuck in. So we're going to go to sculpt mode. Then we're going to go to, let's get ourselves a rounded cube. Then I'm going to go to guides and turn on the grid snap. Now I've got a cube, but I want something a little bit more rectangular. So I'm going to go O1 and square. And then you'll see all the nice arrows appear. We can adjust the size of this with R2, all the various dimensions. And now I've got a nice kind of chocolate bar <laughs> sort of shape. Then I'm going to go stamp in place here on the right. Very cool. Now, um, if you want to have like cool paint and that sort of a thing, I might just make it sort of red. Um, so you'll choose your color. You'll go to tools. You'll go to spray paint. And then you can be like, shwang shwang. If you want to have like a bit of variation of color, you can of course do that too. Um, yeah, it's totally up to you, friends. Whatever you fancy for your particular vehicle is cool. So I've just got a little bit of a, a weird sort of stripey pattern. Um, sweet. Now what I'm going to do is make like a bit of an indent in the vehicle for where the seats are going to be, where the passengers are going to be. This is just going to be a one-seater. Um, so I'm going to go to Tools, go back to Stamp Shape. Then I'm going to go Triangle to Remove. And I'll maybe make the inside a, like a darker red. Cool. Um, you can adjust the size of the grid snap with L1 and down or up on the D-pad if you need a little bit more room to mess around. Cool. Um, maybe like a little bit deeper than that. If that's possible. Maybe not so much. Okay, how's that? That's pretty cool. So we've got a fair, a nice fair dip there. Um, now we're going to put in a little seat. So I think our seat can be black. So I'm going to choose black. I'm going to press triangle so that we're switching to um, adding rather than removing. And I'm going to adjust the shape of this because it's a little bit long at the moment. So L1 and square. And just make it a bit shorter. This is the kind of backrest. Have our backrest. And then we'll have our seat. Swing, swing. And I reckon that's probably alright. 
Um, in the event that you feel like there's too much space in here, for example, and you want to readjust the amount of space that you've taken, you can just go to the stretch tool and you can go to, you can see the negative shapes, like the one that have removed space, they have like a white outline and you can actually adjust their size as well. That's pretty cool. That actually creates like a bit of a nice stepped effect, if you know what I'm saying. But yeah, we just adjust that as we desire. Very cool. So it's like a nice bit of a race car. And now, of course, we want to also have our, our little steering wheel. Um, and you can, of course, uh, you know, choose whatever you want for this. I'm just going to keep it, like, fairly simple. Um, I'll adjust that with L1 and square. And then I will make it a little bit smaller, maybe. Because this is kind of the... The steering wheel stick. Sorry, I don't have all the all the epic vocab. Um, and then I'm going to go here. Give us a nice steering wheel. The thing with these donut shapes is they generally start off pretty thick. So what you can do is make it fairly big and then go on and square. You'll see the arrow here points sort of directly away from it. So not the one that is pointing sort of to the left or the right of it, but the one that's pointing up and down. This changes the thickness. Um, if the grid snap is a little bit too uh, controlling, you can of course always turn off the grid snap. And then when you adjust it, you'll have a lot more control over the like exact size and that sort of stuff. So I'm thinking that looks pretty cool. And then I will quickly put on the grid snap again so that our placement is good. And then I will place it down over there. Following that, I think that I will put some little cylinders just to sort of cross it. Schwang, schwang. Dun, dun. Um, maybe slightly smaller grid and then make it ever so slightly bigger. Okay, cool. And then I can just copy that one and then turn it. Not exactly in the middle, so just keep making that grid smaller with L1 and down on the d-pad okay so there's a there's a fair little uh, steering wheel um, not the greatest in the world per se but it'll do the job we can of course adjust it if you want it to be anything if it's like if it's looking like a little bit too big you can of course use your stretch tool again you might want to turn off the grid snap now and you just adjust it. There you go. Okay, sweet. So now we have a very basic chassis. If you would like uh, your steering wheel to be movable, that's also very possible. All that you'll do is, because at the moment it's all part of one sculpt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a grid snap, L1 and up on the D-pad a few times to make sure it's a bit bigger. Then I'll copy this. I want an X into the sculpt itself, and I'll delete all the elements that aren't the steering wheel. There we go. Then I'm going to take the steering wheel back over here, so that it's it'll be like in line with the old one. I'll quickly delete this old one. Whoopsie. Delete the old one, and move this chap into that spot. And then... We'll actually keep the grid snap on because we're going to want to um, attach it with the motor bolt. But first we're just going to make these a group. So you just press X on both of them. And then on the right you'll see group. On the right you will see it. And now let's grab this and we'll press L1 and... Oh sorry, now we'll just grab this and we'll press L1 and triangle. Now it should be fairly central. Um, but if it isn't... For example, if it was like slightly off like so, or if I'd made the size sort of slightly weird, I could press triangle. Not not L1 and triangle, sorry. You just grab it with R2 and you press triangle and then it readjusts it to the size of the grid. And it makes sure everything's nicely aligned. So now when I put on the grid snap, you'll see that it's actually like pretty central uh, over here, which is cool. Vibes. So now I've made the grid snap quite small, as you can see, 1 by 32, or 1 32nd, whatever. 
30 second <laughs> not sure exactly how that works but you know what I mean the smallest the grid can go and now I'm going to go to gadgets connectors and I'm going to choose the bolt now with the bolt the first part that you put down is the base this is the part that doesn't move then the second part with the little blue connector is the part that does move now this initial placement isn't too important you just need to make sure that it is connected to the object that doesn't move and the object that does move why I say the uh, placement isn't super important is because you're actually going to adjust it so you grab the yellow one here and you can put it in a fairly central position in the sort of neck of the of the steering wheel stick and then you're going to want to put the blue one also in a fairly central position use triangle to align it to the grid so that we know that these chaps are in line but of course once we start working on it it kind of disappears this happens a lot with connectors because of course they're sort of inside objects so we're going to go show and hide and then we're going to say make sure that connectors are shown and we're also going to turn on x-ray so now as you can see we can see the connector very clearly now the last part is to grab this purple dude press triangle so that it's aligned to the grid and of course our steering wheel is going to be able to turn uh, sort of clockwise and anti-clockwise so while you're holding this with R2 hold L2 and then move the left analog stick and point it so that it kind of almost mimics the shape of the steering wheel itself so the circle sort of points in the same direction and everything so as you can see here you see this little ring around it over here, this little grey ring. You want it to make sure that it's just like that. Okay, cool. So now that we have this working, this chap can turn. I've got the grid snap on, so it's turning in a bit of a gritty fashion. But yeah, I can be like, yee-hoo! We're turning. We're turning. You can go clockwise, anti-clockwise, all these sorts of things. Um, if you don't want it to turn on its own, you can just make it so that is not movable and probably not collidable either so now it's just going to chill but if i want to move it i can or if you want to move it with an animation or all those sorts of things then you can but we don't want it to move by itself okay sweet so the chassis and the old steering wheel is looking pretty cool now let's move on to some tires uh you're going to want to go I want an X into your original sculpt for the chassis. The chassis, the chassis. Then you're going to go guides and turn on the old mirror. Um, the mirror might not be perfectly aligned with your uh, shape, in which case you don't have to worry about putting it on. If, for example, your mirror is slightly misaligned with your sculpt, it's off onto one side, uh, then what you want to do is just make sure that you've got the grid snap on so that you can line up all the, the wheel holes very nicely. We're going to put on the mirror snap for now. Okay, sweet. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go with a cylinder. And I think I will also actually have the grid snap on. I'll reduce the size of these cylinders. Just like so. Make them a bit bigger. Then I'm going to go triangle. These are the, these are the like the tire, the wheel holes, you know what I'm saying, in the, in the car. So we'll put them over here. As you can see... The car's a little bit like deep, so you can already see the um, you can already see the inside of the car here. So we might make a few adjustments to the inside of the car, but that's perfect. This is all part of the experimentation process. So we're going to do some wheel holes over here, and then we're going to go R1 and rotate ourselves, and then we're going to go to the other side and try and make sure that we judge it so that we do the exact same. And it's sort of equidistant on both sides. Cool. That's looking pretty sweet. And now in the event that this is not, uh, or this is showing too much of the inside like this, we'll do just what we did before. We'll go into uh, tools, then we'll go stretch, and we'll just slightly move this up so that those bits and bobs cannot be seen lovely so I just grabbed the bottom of that negative shape and I just pulled it up you can see the arrow is the direction it will move in 
And now um, we don't get to see inside anymore, which is very cool. Lovely stuff. Cool. So now we have the tire holes, as it were. Now it's time to make some tires. So I just put the grid snap back onto one. Now I'm going to go with a filled donut. You can, of course, go with a donut donut. But I'm going to go with a filled donut for now. And I'm just going to put down a little wheel. Nothing too crazy. Just the ba most basic filled donut wheel shape that you've got. But what I'm going to do, friends, is add in a little bit of a... Maybe I'll go with red. Just a little bit of decal for the little wheel itself. You might need to adjust the size of the grid snap so that you can actually do something with it. And what I'm going to do, friends, is I'm going to have this wheel, but I'm also going to create like a a shape, just like a little bit of an indent in it. This can be a picture, this can be whatever. I just do this so that you can see if the wheel is turning. Just, just for when we're sort of doing a bit of the old... Um, uh, what's the word like debugging and testing to see if the wheels are spinning all that sort of stuff because if I remove this indent You can't actually tell if the wheel is spinning and when I was doing it I was like oh is my is my like sort of spinning logic working. I can't actually tell um, So this is what we do. We just take a little chunk out so that it's not like perfectly symmetrical in every direction We can see that it is turning Alrighty. So now we will adjust it so that it fits onto this, into this little wheel space. Shwang shwang, shwang shwang. Lovely stuff. You might need to do some subtler adjustments. In the event that the grid snap is a little bit too rigid, what we're going to do is switch to the precise move, which is this sort of snowflake looking thing. And then we can adjust. So when you precise move stuff, it basically only moves along one axis. So you can move along the X, you can move along the Y, you can move along the Z, woohoo, and then you get kind of like a cool graph-like thing here, which really helps with uh, precise movement. So I'd say a little bit to the, oh, actually that's, that's not bad, maybe a little bit to the right, a little tiny amount, and that's looking cool. Good stuff. That, that this wheel gap is maybe a little bit large um, for the size of the wheel I've got. Uh, but that's chill. If it's a little bit too big, we know what to do. We just go to tools, we go to stretch, and we reduce it. But I will say, let's put on the grid snap so that we know how much we reduce it by. So I'm going to grab it. One, two. Cool. Then we'll grab this side. Note that when you grab it, it'll immediately move it to align with the grid. So like, I just press R2. And it sort of moves. One, two. Um, and let's see, is that okay? Cool. Let's just do a quick check. I'm going to grab this dude, move it over there. Okay, that's enough space. Lovely stuff. So, the way that I move the tires around is, I'm just going to have my grid snap on. L1 and R2, copy it over to this side. And then we've got a tire. Grid snap on, copied onto this side. But as you can see, we're the wrong way around. So what you're going to do is you're going to press L3. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> Sorry, let me try that again. I'm going to grab it. It's sort of spun it at a bit of an angle. I'm going to go L3. There we go. And it sort of spins it. It flips it, sorry. <clears throat> now we're just going to copy this one and move it here. Lovely stuff. So you sort of you sort of do all your finicky placements of the initial tire, and then you just uh, move them over with the grid, and they'll all be in line. Lovely. <clears throat> so one thing that I'm going to also show you, friends, is how to make it so that um, if you want to make all of these linked in other words if you want to like for example change your tires at a later date but don't want to have to do all this nonsense like ooh, copy this like make this tire different then delete it and copy and so on and so forth that's chilled so what we'll do is we'll go to tools and then we will go to clone and then we're going to see some vibes over here and you're going to go live clone so we're going to go live clone and then we're going to say l1 and triangle on this chap sure swing and now 
it's a little bit hard to tell but these are now live clones of each other so all of these tires are the same so if i make a change here i add this on as you can see all the tires will get it so this was added in uh, i think update version 2.44 a very nice feature for people sculpting multiple objects that are like sort of repeated throughout uh, a sculpt so this little go-kart is looking pretty cool at the moment but just as we want a turning steering wheel we also want to have a turning tire so the way that we're going to do this is as follows first of all i think i'm just going to pick up my my little car here and i'm just going to rotate it so it's a little bit easier to see everything that's going on i'm a little bit close to the ground there and it can be a little bit frustrating if the camera sort of keeps clipping me so let's see what we can do over here so once again we're going to grab it and then press triangle it should be in line but if it isn't it'll line it up nicely now i'm going to go to gadgets connectors and i'm going to go ball joint once again because a car wheel only really moves in a clockwise or anti-clockwise fashion it doesn't sort of move uh, in a, a kind of ball joint arrangement uh, sorry so we're going to go and get ourselves a bolt and we're going to go connect from oh sorry what we've actually got to do is we've got to go l1 and x into the car itself because at this stage we're all grouped together so this is seeing it as one object so we go l1 and x and then you'll see that the tires and the chassis are different you can tell because when you hover over this one it's got a bit of a highlight around it and then this one is a separate sort of highlights around it so we're going to go bolt in connectors r2 on the chassis of the car and then r2 fairly central on the wheel if you can get it there um, but don't worry if you can't we're going to be adjusting with the grid snap anyway then you're going to go R, R2 and then triangle to align it. And now grab this blue chap. Make the grid a little bit smaller. And then you're going to want to align it with the center of the wheel. I'd say that's pretty central. I'm just going to grab this and go. I'm actually just going to grab this wheel. And go. Okay. So what I've done is I've made the wheel slightly larger, but I've also aligned it to the grid, which I should have actually done originally. Lovely stuff. So we're actually going to do that with all the wheels now. Okay, sweet. So we're just going to delete these wheels. Place them like so, just as before. L3 to flip it. Okay, sweet. Sorry for that, friends, but... Trial and error. Should ring. Make sure that we clap it good and well. Now we're going to go motor bolt. Make sure that our grid snap is on. If you've lost where the grid snap is, just press L1 and triangle. And it'll make whatever you're looking at the sort of origin of the grid. Then we're going to put the sort of the yellow one, the base bolt, on the chassis. And the blue bolt on the center of the wheel. So now, before, it was sort of not aligning very nicely with the tire. So now we've just made it so that we grab the, we grab the tire, press triangle to align it to the grid, and then we are looking good. Now, if I look here, I'll be able to see that the tire can actually turn in a clockwise or anti-clockwise fashion. And we can tell that it's working because we've just added our little groove there in the tire. And as you can see, it's rotating perfectly on the center sort of the center point of the tire alrighty next up we're going to do the next one L1 and triangle to show us where our grid is connected to the chassis connected to the center of the tire and that should be pretty good let's have a look very cool if it isn't on the center point of the tire for example over here the tire is going to rotate in a weird way oh wait sorry no uh, not the blue points of the tire, but actually this little pink part. If you like adjust it like this, it'll be like whoa. Or even if it's like slightly off like this. If you know what I'm saying. So we adjust the position. We just put the blue on there because it's nice to know that that's the sort of central point. But the most important is of course this pink 
section over here. Lovely stuff. Next, we're going to go down to this one, L1 and triangle. We'll put down a bolt, R2 on the chassis, R2 on the center of the wheel. Should be good. Quick check. I feel like a bit of a mechanic at the moment. And then last one, L1 and triangle, bolt, put one here, put one in the center. Lovely stuff. Okay, cool, friends. So now we have four tires that are working in a sort of spinny fashion. But just like the steering wheel, if we play, we don't want them to actually start spinning of their own volition. So we're going to go to each of these and press X on them, on each of the tires, L1 and square. And we're going to make it so that they are not movable or collidable. Lovely stuff. So now we have tires that can spin, but will not unless we tell them to. Do, 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 do. Cool. So we have our tires, we have the chassis of our car, and um, that's looking pretty cool, friends. Alrighty. Now the last thing I might add is like a bit of an exhaust. So I'm going to go here to sculpt mode, choose my stamp shape, and I'll get a little cylinder. And now you might want to put on grid snap. And make sure that your mirror is off. I mean, depending on how you've organized the shape. Because, for example, if I go mirror, and I put a little exhaust over here, you're going to see that I've got one on the front as well. So I'll quickly delete that. So make sure that, um, just, just be wary of your mirror, because you might be adding stuff to the front as well as the back. Some little exhausts. Very rock and roll. Just create some some interest there. Mm, the red's too similar a color, so let me go. Let me go with like a, a dark red. There we go. Cool. Okay, sweet. So now I have a car. Actually, I lie. Let me add some little headlights. I'll make them yellow. This one there one there and don't worry if it looks a little bit silly we'll add some like proper lighting effects to it later cool so now we have a very simple little go-karty buggy car uh, engines in the back no boot um, <laughs> and yeah so here we have our little car this is the design that we're gonna go for and now let's add some logic to it once again if you have a bit of car logic and your cars ready all set up you don't have to worry about this next stage, but we're just going to go over some of the logic uh, of how to make a driving car. Okay, Voids, friends. We now have a cool little car, and we're going to add some logic to it now. So I'm going to go Guides, Grid Snap, and then I'm going to go Gadgets, Logic and Processing, and get us a microchip. And I'm going to stamp it to the car, Try and stamp it to the car. Uh, it's not a perfectly flat surface. And friends, in truth, a perfectly flat surface is very important um, for our movers and such. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into sculpt mode. And I'm going to create a box. Don't worry if it looks silly. Uh, it's going to actually be invisible. But I'm just going to add this box. Then I'm going to go R2 and then L1 and then X so that it's now part of this group. So now the little box is part of the car group. So now I'm going to put a microchip on here. So we're going to go logic and processing just as before, get ourselves a microchip. And then L1, maybe make it a little bit smaller. L1 to surface snap, and we'll surface snap it onto the old car. It's a little bit, it's a little bit freaking not sticking to the okay well so long as it's flat like very very flat um, we're good so for example if I put it down and it was like over here or whatever you can see it's a very squiff angle it's a very inaccurate angle I should say uh, which isn't what we want 
We want to make sure that it's dead, dead straight. Alrighty. So there we are. We've got a nice straight, very flat, flatly aligned microchip on a little car. It looks like it's floating a little bit above, but that's fine. So long as it's like got that very flat appearance, uh, we know that it is in fact surface snapped to this entire group, which is good. So step one, how do we make a drivable car? Well, first we need to be able to control it. So we're going to go sensors and input, grab ourselves a controller sensor and put it down. We'll delete all these wires because we don't have to worry about them too much for now. Now, what we're going to need next is a mover. So we're going to go mover. We'll plop that down just over there. And now we need to basically have a way of accelerating. So what I'm going to do is just simply, I'm going to go into the controller sensor with L1 and square. And we're going to connect R2 to this here mover. But that's not the end, friends. We've got to go L1 and square on the mover and make sure that we're pointing in the right direction. Make sure your grid snap is on for this. You're going to go to your mover and you're going to go local space. Then you're going to point this arrow forward. And you can also adjust this little Y knobbly bit over there, gizmo, and point it upwards. Just so that X is here, Y is there, and Z is left or right. Doesn't The, the Y doesn't matter too much so long as the X is pointing forwards. Okay, sweet. I'm going to L1 and square, and I'm going to go to important properties, and I'm going to go remote controllable. Now I'm just going to jump in, I'm going to press R2. And as you can see, our little vehicle is already rolling, which is very cool. Now, <clears throat> we don't only want to go forward, we also want to go back. So to do that, we don't have to make another mover or do all sorts of crazy things. What we're going to do is something very cool. Um, we're going to make use of a combiner to uh, have some fun. So we'll delete this initial connection. We'll go to our tools, or sorry, our gadgets, and then we'll go logic and processing. Then what we're going to do is go combiner. Now how the combiner works is it takes two different buttons and it considers them as po positive or negative. So we've got the mover. And when the mover is turned on, it will go to its movement, its forward speed, like this. So if we connect R2 to it, for example, generally the accelerate button, it'll give us speed, a positive value. If we want to make it so that we can reverse, in other words, have a negative value, then we just need to plug a button press into the negative side of this combiner. So it basically makes one gadget work with two button inputs and it makes it able to be positive or negative. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to go R2 to the positive, that's going to be moving forward, and then L2 to the negative, that's moving backwards. You can of course have whatever keys you'd like. Then I'm going to connect this to forward speed. Alrighty, so let's play. R2 moves forward, L2 moves backwards. Yeehaw! Whoopsie. <laughs> so there we are. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, the stuff was jumping around because I was accidentally holding it with R2 like that. R2, L2. Lovely stuff. So, at the moment, we've got a car that can go forwards and backwards, which is cool. But we also want to be able to turn left and right. So what we're going to need for that is, we're going to go into moves and output, and we're going to get ourselves a rotator. It makes sense, right? Because we're rotating the car left and right as we go. We're not going diagonally or going left or whatever it might be. We're always either going forwards or backwards. But where forwards is, is contingent on where the uh, vehicle is pointing. And why is that so? That's because we made our mover local space. So wherever forward, wherever forward is for this microchip, that's where it's going to go. Just like a car. The use of the steering wheel and all that sort of business. But now to rotate, we're going to need a little bit more logic. So what we're going to do is we're going to go logic and processing. And now we're going to get a splitter. We're going to go L1 and square. We're going to go to page three 
of the controller sensor. I'm going to get left stick local. Don't get left stick on page two. We're going to get left stick local. If you get left stick on page two, it'll kind of be funky and it like it depends where you are on the screen. Um, you know, like for example, this is left and right, but if I do like this, then forwards and backwards is left and right. If you imagine it like north, east, west, south, I'm going right on the left analog stick, that's taking me east. But if I change my orientation, right on the analog is going to take me south. Whereas with the local, it'll be like, ah, oh, you must mean this way, shushring, that sort of a thing. Once again, a little bit of a crazy, uh, crazy description. I hope it made sense. So we're going for left stick local on page three. So now we have X and Y. And as we can see, X is, of course, left or right movement. So that's on the old X axis, shang shuang. And then we've got the Y axis as well. So we're going to go for the X axis. I believe it's the x-axis. I might be wrong, but um, we're going to see now. And now, so we have it on the x-axis, left or right. And now we're actually going to take in a new combiner. And just like this, we have rotation in one direction. So when it's positive, it's going to be rotating in one direction. And when it's negative, it rotates in the other direction. It works just like the mover, except with, you know, angle. So now what I'm going to do is with my grid snap turned on, I'm going to make it, I'm going to grab this little white bauble gizmo thing and point it upwards. So as you can see, we're rotating at 100 degrees, 180 degrees a second when this is powered on. And we want to make it so that when I'm going left on the analog stick, the left analog stick, left or right, I'm going left or right on the rotator. So you'll go we might need to adjust this, but I'm going to go positive to positive to positive to positive, negative to negative. And now let's have a quick check. Oh, did I connect this properly? Oh, I didn't connect it to the rotator itself. Silly me. So, sorry, it's a little bit close together. Let me space these things out a bit more so it's a little bit clearer. So we go with a splitter from the left stick local. It splits it into X and Y. We take another splitter. It splits it into positive and negative. Y is up and down. X is left and right. Positive is left. Negative is right, I believe. I always get it wrong, so I could be wrong. Um, but if I am wrong and left is actually right, and you know, we can just adjust these. So positive goes to negative, negative goes to positive. But let's give it a try. So we begin. If I go left... We're turning right and if i go right we're turning left so i was right i was right that i was wrong you're going to go you're going to delete these chaps and you're going to go positive to negative negative to positive positive. and now when we jump in and we go left we're going to turn left and when i go right we're going to turn right and if i press r2 meow, we are now turning while we're driving as we can see so that friends is looking pretty cool we now know how to go forwards and backwards we now know how to turn left and right Woohoo! lovely stuff friends but now if we want to have a bit of a closer view of our little car we might go into controller sensor important properties and set it to possessable and you can actually make it force possession so that as we get into the dream we're going to hop into the car sweet so now we're part of the car, swing, swing, swing. we are driving, we're looking cool, <clears throat> that's looking sweet. So at the moment this is like a car that moves super slow and has like maximum drag. What we're going to do is we're going to go strength 100% and we're going to go damping, we're going to experiment with this now uh, for the feel of the car. Strength 100%, damping 0, let's see what happens now. So if I go forward, swing, 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 screw. Oh, at the moment, it's looking. So as you can see, I'm sort of drifting insanely into the distance. And it's kind of just a bit ridiculous. Now, if I make damping 100%, as soon as I let go of R2, cha, I'm going to stop. 
So we're driving. We're driving. And then I let go of R2 and I stop. So of course when you're driving a car you don't want to like immediately stop um, as you as the stuff sort of happens. So in order to create that sense of speeding up and slowing down, you can adjust the dampening here. Or something that you can do is you can go to gadgets and get yourself a signal manipulator. You can delete this original connection between the combiner and the mover. You'll connect the output here and you'll connect the signal over here to the speed. So basically the, the wire is the same as before. It's just got this little gadget in between. And the signal manipulator set to output smoothing is going to then be adjusted to something like three seconds. So it takes, let's say, three seconds to speed up and 1.5 seconds to slow down. So when you press R2, three seconds to get to max speed, and then when you let go of R2, one and a half seconds to go back to zero speed. Alrighty. So now, uh, that's looking pretty cool. This is actually a tip that I learned from watching Vince Cully's tutorial. So devs, check out his, uh, if you want to like learn tons of great stuff. He's an absolute legend and, and a great dude too. So here we have our little signal manipulator. That's going to slow the increase and decrease of our little vehicle. So now R2, I'm driving. And if I let go, you can see it slows down a bit. It doesn't immediately stop. I'm speeding up. I start a little bit slow. Oh, no, it's the edge. You see, that's very cool. Now, all of these things, there's a lot of interplay between the signal manipulator and the dampening. You can completely remove dampening entirely from all these various things and use um, another piece of logic to uh, focus specifically on damping. Um, so, for example, if I put damping on zero and everything, we go... And as you can see, I'm just absolutely going forever. Um, the reason why you may want to... Um, govern damping with a separate piece of logic is just so that your mover for example when I was messing around with it I set my damping to something like 35% um, so now shush, 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 shwing, shwing. oh okay so you can pretty much you can pretty much just mess around with this as you desire um, but I think for now, we don't have to worry too much about like, you know, drifting and all that sort of stuff. There's a whole bunch of logic that you can have there. Um, but if you wanted to have something, what I would do is, just to, just sort of simply, I would have an advanced mover. I would make all the speed zero. And then I would adjust the damping over here. So this is looking pretty cool. So there's just a little bit of, little bit of damping. So now if I drive, swish, there's a little bit of a more realistic car feel. I can do my like wheelies, my donuts. Shrink, shrink, shrink. So what's cool about um, using this as like a separate gadget is that you can have your dampening that determines specifically your like movement backwards and forwards dampening, which you can of course also mess around with the signal manipulator. This is basically just giving you more options to control your speeding up and slowing down. And then this advanced mover, you can be like, okay, cool, cool. This damping's looking dope. Uh, I just want to make sure that when I'm on the y-axis, for example, that I'm falling or rising at a different rate from when I'm going forwards or backwards, for example. Um, however, friends, I've also got to demonstrate something to you now, which is if we go over the edge of this business, we don't actually fall. Because currently, our vehicle is not actually a movable object. And only movable objects are affected by gravity. Um, so the movement that it's doing is actually completely based on the mover and not based on the physics of the world. So what we want to do is, friends, we want to make our car something that can actually fall off a cliff or drive up a ramp, for example. Okay, team, so 
To deploy these gravity-defying stunts of going up ramps and driving off cliffs, we're going to need to make this car a movable object. Um, but that might prove quite tricky, unless you happen to know a dude by the name of Tap Giles, who is, of course, an absolute tutorial legend. I was speaking to Tap Giles about this, and I was like, Yo, Tap, bro, my, you know, my car keeps driving off a cliff, but it just goes straight. It doesn't actually fall. How do I, how do I gravity? And he taught me this technique. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our little car vehicle. We're going to tap double tap X when we're inside of the group so that everything is highlighted. I'm going to go O1 and square. And we're going to go make sure that collidable is turned off. So at the moment it's an immovable non-collidable object. So you make sure that everything is non-movable and everything is non-collidable. We're actually also just going to go to this little square here and make sure that it's invisible and non-collidable too. Lovely stuff. So now everything should be, if we go here, we'll see that everything is not collidable, not movable. Perfection. So now it's just going to be chilling there if we're in play mode. But you're saying to me now, mean lad, bro, what are you talking about? We wanted to make this a movable object, so why are we removing the movable function from, from all of this stuff? Well, movable is basically can be affected by physics. So we want to make it so that this car itself is not affected by physics. Because if it is, and you make everything movable and collidable, well, I'll demonstrate. We're going to get something where, like, okay, let's go here. Movable. It's going to start resting on its tires. Sorry, I'll make everything collidable as well. Movable and collidable. It starts resting on its tires, and wee, the tires completely destroy themselves. If you want your thing to be a movable object, that will only move when there's literally power to like a motor bolt, for example, when the wheels are turning. You'll have to make it like physically like accurate, like physically able to be uh, like self-propelled uh, under like particular physical circumstances. So that is really difficult and I'm not an engineer, so I can't actually do that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that collidable and movable are off and we're going to simulate this We're going to simulate this um, Movability uh, the effects of gravity and so on and so forth um, Because actually doing it with like physical like, you know bolts and all these sorts of things motor bolts and so on is very complicated and very expensive thermo wise So this is what we're going to do the uh, the strap at tap jaws taught me so what we're going to do is we're going to go to modes we're going to go sculpt mode, and what we're going to do now is go make a rounded cube. And friends, I want you to think of this rounded cube as the collision box of your vehicle. So you're going to want it pretty central in your vehicle. Go all the way to the front, all the way to the back. For now, let's make it sort of just floor level. So you might need to adjust the size of your grid snap. Lovely stuff. Maybe a bit of that. Cool. Maybe a little bit further back. Because you're only really going to be hitting sort of the front there. Maybe the tires. In here. And then we're going to stamp in place. So now, friends, I want you to think of this chap over here as a object that is serving as the collision box. This is the part of your car that is the sort of physical element, the part that can hit into stuff and drive over stuff and so on and so forth. Get it fairly central in your vehicle. Then you're going to go R2 and you're going to go L1 and X so that you actually align it with your vehicle and they're now part of the same group. Then you're going to go L1 and square and you're going to make this group movable. So now the car itself is not movable, not collidable, so on and so forth. But when it's in a group with this little hockey puck that we've got under here, it's really looking like a go-kart now, it is a movable object. And you say, mean lad, I want proof, bruv. And I'll say, let's do this. Here! Yeah! Woohoo! So now we have a, <laughs> a go-kart that is spinning into the void. And we're having a great time. You gotta love it, mate. So as you can see, with Tap Giles's give it a block to use as its sort of base um, technique, 
uh, we have created the simulation of a physical object without having to make like wheels that turn and so on and so forth. So that's cool. We know how to make it a physical car that can be affected by gravity. And now we can go into the sculpture properties and make it invisible. We need to make sure that that little puck is collidable though. Ensure you've got that. Everything else is non-collidable in the car. Lovely stuff. So now we have a car that can be driven off cliffs. Whoa! Lovely stuff. We also have a car that can drive up ramps. Now to get yourself a ramp, don't use the grid snap because the grid snap only has 45 degree snaps. So we're going to go precise move. Well, actually no. Use the grid snap to place it. And then use the precise move to rotate it. <laughs> and then we'll give it like such an angle, so on and so forth. Even that's a little bit hectic. Maybe something like that. Something like that. Cool. It's looking good. So let's give ourselves a bit of a reverse. Lovely. Yeah, and we're going to go for it. Yeah. Dang, this thing is slow. Woohoo. But there you are. We get the sort of vibe of going over a hill and well not a hill but a, a ramp. Now I'm just gonna make our car a lot faster, because that was ridiculously slow. Something like ten meters per second. It's a bit better. Now one thing that you might want to do if you're going over ramps and bumps and all these sorts of things is to ensure that you have a gyroscope. So if you go into Movers and Output, this is in the Gadgets menu, the first thing on the left is a gyroscope. The gyroscope is something that keeps your vehicle upright. Don't make this too strong. You can keep it at 50% or whatever. You might even want to make it a little bit weaker. Um, I'll show you what happens when the strength is at 100%. It's basically like if you drive at a squiff angle, whoop, it doesn't matter. Your car will always be pointing upright. If you have 50% strength, then if you go over the edge of something, You'll see there's a little bit of there's a little bit of sort of um, a little bit of maneuvering. I like to actually have it at something like twenty five percent. So you can go over something and you can dip forward, but the car will sort of readjust itself into a nice position. So you can mess around with that gyroscope. That's just so that your car doesn't like it doesn't sort of flip. So for example, if I add uh, like a little bit of a weird janky piece over here and if I get rid of the gyroscope and I'm like okay sweet yeah, yeah. and then you know you know you blow up you blow up the entire world so what you're gonna want to do is get your little gyroscope to make sure that if you do blow up the world <laughs> that whoo you're gonna eventually be the right way out okay this, this obviously just breaks it all. In the event that you're like in a terrible situation and you're like, okay, cool. My, um, my thing is not working. It's like totally flipped me like in a completely insane way. You want to give your vehicle like a bit of a flipper -oony. So let's just go here and go here. Zing. So that wasn't so bad. Whoa. You see, even when it flipped there, it went back to its original position. Now oh, that service. Okay, so in the event that you flip over, let's say that by default your gyroscope is off. And then let's say you want to have a button that flips you. Then you're going to turn on your gyroscope with this keyframe. And we'll rename this keyframe Activate Gyro. Activate, because you don't necessarily want to gyro all the time. Generally, games have like a built-in gyro to vehicles and that sort of stuff, planes and whatnot. Um, but this will make it so that only when you press the freaking triangle button will your gyro be active. And you can make it pretty strong. If, if it's only going to be used when you press it, you can make the gyro pretty strong. So let's say like, yeah, whoa, uh, uh, shush, wing. Okay, I'm not demonstrating this very well. Um, let's make it like, let's make it a hundred percent. Actually, when I press triangle, we're going to activate the gyro and it's going to be, it's going to be nuts. 
We'll just create like a bit of a craziness. So this will hopefully flip us. Okay, I didn't want to flip like fully, but that's fine. So now I'm using my gyro, shushing, and I've landed straight straight side up, as it were. Zoom. I'm coming for you. Come at me, boys. Gyro. Haha, <laughs> and I'm right way up. Anyway, so that's how you flip your vehicle back onto its its sort of right way round with a nice little gyro. You can have a sort of a weak gyro working all the time, or you can have a strong gyro that is activated with a button press. It is of course your your preference. I like to go with a weak gyro that's kind of constantly active. I'll go with 30%. But it's actually, it's not a bad idea to have both. Um, lovely. So now we have how to drive, how to turn, how to make it a physical object that can go over ramps and off cliffs, and how to make it so that your vehicle will right itself and flip if it if it gets flipped. Flip back to its original sort of right way up. Lovely stuff. Okay, friends, last up is the handbrake. So we're going to go into animate, get ourselves a keyframe. And on this keyframe, we're going to go to mover, and we're going to make strength zero. Or maybe 10% if you want to do like handbrake turns, you know what I'm saying? So you're still moving forward, but just like much slower. Um, we're going to connect this to L1, because why not? And then we're going to go rename it to handbrake. And not only that, friends, we're also going to make it so that it's a slow power-up. So it takes, like, let's say a second on either end. Or maybe not on either end, just a second for it to work. So we go, and we're going, ah. okay, I need to make this thing bigger. Just so that we can demonstrate. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to add a little bit of, a bit of uh, distance. Woo! -hoo! Lovely. Handbrake. So that's if I have my hand off the old trigger. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to go handbrake while I'm still driving. And there's still a bit of juice. There's still a bit of sort of kick back um, and then you'll also sort of like blast off when you let go of the handbrake so we might want to make it not as weak so we'll make it something like 50% because generally if the strength is weaker than the damping then it's not going to move at all so let's go like and then I go handbrake I can make a nice turn Although I do want to still be able to move on the old, uh, let's say, the rotating on the X, or move on the X. So I'm going to make X and I'm going to reduce that to zero. This is our like damp control, as it were. So I'm going to go, I'm turning, and now handbrake, screw. Okay, let's just turn all of these to zero. Screw. Oh, too much power. Handbrake. Screw. That's pretty cool. Okay, sweet. Oh, dang. Okay. So I'm just going to experiment with these a bit, friends. If I make dampen X 100, dampen Y 100, then I'm going to go, whee Okay. Dampen Y. Maybe a little bit too... Oh, goodness me. Anti-gravity. So maybe don't go too high with the X and the Y. Um, and then Z is forwards and backwards. Okay, cool. Let's go shush swing. We're at 50%. I'm turning, I'm turning, okay, I'm thinking that when we handbrake, not only do we reduce the strength of this chap, 
but we're also going to increase the damping or sorry decrease the damping of x and maybe not y because y is sort of your up and down movement okay so let's go here i'm turning i'm turning i'm turning if i handbrake screw I'm able to turn a bit more but I think I want even more juice I want even more juice from my turning while I'm hand breaking so I'm gonna to go to the rotator and I'm gonna increase its strength by like to 80% so we're gonna go shua swing and then when I hand breaks so I'm turning I'm turning but when I hand breaks ah lovely stuff that's cool so we increase our turn power oh goodness oh no it's an edge Actually, this is. <laughs> this actually makes it uh, pretty fun. So, handbrake turn. Handbrake turn. So, this is actually a pretty fun little car, friends. And it's working pretty nicely. Um. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty cool, friends. I am loving it. So, uh, the, the other thing that I mentioned earlier was the tires. And, of course, I mentioned that, that we were going to be turning them and stuff. But it turns out that when I figured out the tires, I hadn't actually figured out the physical stuff yet. So, it turns out that we can't actually have the tires as uh, turning because of the bolts. Because they would need to be a movable object. And if they're a movable object... That means that we can't make the entire car a movable object because then it it kind of like it it hits the like collidable objects and it spins and it goes all crazy. So unfortunately, friends, um, we won't be able to make these wheels movable. Um, so in the event that this thing is too much of a giveaway that it's not turning, we can then delete that. Um, and I believe I made this a live clone. But um, it appears not to be working, so let me just delete these all individually. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. That's looking cool. Um, we might want to we might want to lift this off the ground to begin with, just so that it falls onto its falls onto its feet, as it were. Zoom, ring, screw, screw, dun 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 dun, screw. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, sweet. So, friends, unfortunately, we can't have the tires turning. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how to do that. Sorry, that is a bit of an immersion breaker. Um, but it's not currently compatible with the way that I'm doing things at the minute. Whoops. So, sorry for that one, friends. But I think in terms of everything else, in terms of the, the feel and the driving and the, the, um, the flipping, the handbrake and all that sort of good stuff i think it's looking a-okay alrighty friends so we now have our vehicle and our blank puppet there's literally nothing in this chap just a common or garden blank basic puppet and we're now going to go over how to make our puppets able to enter and exit this vehicle so we're going to put in a grid snap we're going to go into gadgets we're going to go sensors and inputs and grab ourselves a tag you can reduce the size of this grid snap and just stick this tag right onto the front of the old vehicle. Very nice. Now it's very important, friends, that when it comes to this tag, you put it on the vehicle itself and not within the microchip. Because the microchip that I'm going to quickly rename Car Logic is going to be turned on and off. And the tag is something that the player needs to detect whether the car is on or whether the car is off. Alrighty. So we're going to go inside of our puppet. And we're going to make a trigger zone. So this is in sensors and input. We're going to go trigger zone. And it's going to say, okay, sweet. If I detect the tag, which I actually forgot to name. So let's go to that tag. I'm going to call it vehicle or car or whatever. Vehicle, lovely, lovely. We're going to go to this trigger zone. If I detect the tag by the name of vehicle, within this zone, so you can go sort of from the pelvis region, you can make it a little bit bigger than that. Cool. It's currently detecting. So if you're close enough to the vehicle, then it's going to display 
It's going to display like, get in, you know, or enter a vehicle, or whatever it is. So we're going to have our text displayer. I want to square on the text displayer and make sure we power it. Enter text. It's going to be press angle bracket. Whoops. Square. Close angle bracket to enter. And that's going to appear sort of, uh, let's say, center and then a little bit, a little bit up. Hereabouts, I'd say. So at the moment, if we're close enough, it'll say press square to enter. So one thing I did on the old car before was I made it possessable, but also force possession. So we're going to quickly go and turn off force possession. Instead, we're going to make our little dude over here force possession. <laughs> so now we're in charge of our dude. We're running around. If I'm not there, I can't I can't enter the vehicle. But if I'm close, it'll say press, squ press square to enter. Lovely. So now we want to make it so that if we are close enough, it's going to show us that we can enter it. But now how do we figure out the logic for that? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to logic and processing and grab ourselves a variable. And this variable is going to be, oh sorry, that's a variable modifier. We're going to grab ourselves a variable. It's the one that doesn't have the gear. I'm going to name this vehicle, this variable, sorry, in car. Oh, I've said I car. In car. The minimum value will be zero. And the maximum value will be one. Zero is false, one is true. So you're either in the car or you're not in the car. Now, if we are close enough to the vehicle and we press square, it's gonna we're gonna want to enter the vehicle. So we'll go logic and processing, grab ourselves an AND gate and put it down over here. Into the A port, we're going to have the trigger zone. Into the B port, we're going to have the square button. So we just go L1 and square on the controller sensor and then square into the AND gate. So now, if I press square, I'm just going to arrange this with X, so it's a little bit neater. If I press square and the trigger zone detects that I'm near the vehicle, it's going to do something. And what is the thing that it's going to do? It's going to make in car true. So we're going to go variable modifier, put it down over here, and then power it with the AND gate. And what it's going to do is make the variable in car set to 1. Lovely stuff. So when we are close enough to the vehicle and we press square it's going to set the in car variable to one so when in car is one in other words true we are in fact in the car we're going to need to activate a few things the first of which is a teleporter this is all logic that is within our puppet just to confirm so when this is equal to one we're going to go current value and we're going to power it here. So how zero and one works with these variables is zero is like no value or negative value. And then one is like on or activated. So if this is equal to one, it'll be turning on all of the stuff that's connected to it. We don't have to have any calculators or any sort of what if business there. We're just going to have um, or if statements slash calculators. It's just going to be powered on by default. So now this is going to go to the vehicle tag. So the teleporter is going to go to the vehicle tag and it's going to match not only target position, but also target orientation. Now we're going to do a bit of adjusting here. So I'm going to go R3 to see what's happening. And at first I'm actually just going to delete this wire so that we can see where our character is. So that's looking pretty cool. We can see that they're getting into position, but they're kind of colliding with it and it's going a little bit crazy. So I'm going to also make it so that I'm going to have a keyframe and this keyframe is going to make it so that they are no longer movable or collidable. 
So they're going to be basically stuck in space. They're not going to be moving on their own. They're not going to be under the effects of physics, because that's what movable means. And they're not going to be colliding with stuff. So they'll be able to fit into the car, even if their proportions aren't exactly fitting. They'll just sort of, you know, float through it. They'll clip through it. Um, but we'll hide that clipping by putting the feet, you know, whatever, within the solid, solid sculpt. So this one we're going to call no mov slash coal, which of course means no movement or colliding. Lovely stuff. We're going to connect that. We're just going to turn it on for now. And now we're going to press R3. So now our character is there. He's looking pretty cool. And that is a vibe. So what we're going to do in order to make it so that our character is actually nicely aligned with our car is that we're going to go okay cool 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 we're going to press play and then we're actually going to grab this gizmo over here and we're going to move it so i'm grabbing it with r2 and although it isn't moving you can see that the player actually is so you grab the gizmo you've got to do this while the game is actually playing and then you adjust it it's actually pretty cool that's looking pretty good. Maybe a little bit like that. Lovely stuff. So now the character is oh, maybe a little bit off in terms of the angle. Oh, maybe a little bit much. Okay, lovely stuff. So as you can see, by making slight adjustments here, it doesn't look like anything changes, but you can see the character's position changing. Yoo-hoo! It should go crazy. So that's looking cool. So that's stuff that you can do while it's in play mode. Otherwise, you have to be like, Ugh, okay, if I, you know, adjust this for blah, 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 It's kind of like, this is if this is where the tag is, this is where the character is. So you're like, okay, cool. If it's here, then the character's going to be about here. If it's here, then the character's going to be like over here. That's, that's this, like sort of adjusting it while it's playing is just a way to make it a little bit uh, easier to see exactly what's cracking. Might just move a little bit there. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. So the back is really like against the seat. Okay, cool. So when in car is activated, it's going to move us to this position. Not only that, it's going to make us non-movable, non-collidable. But uh, we've also got to actually get into a pose. And so for this one, we're going to do a different keyframe. And this pose is going to be like, we'll quickly put on a puppet mirror. Knees will be up. Feet will be under. Hands will be out, reaching for the old steering wheel. Lovely stuff. That's probably not too bad. So let's quickly actually make sure these are all on at the same time. We'll rename this keyframe Pose. Lovely stuff. And now they're all on. Okay, cool. That's not too bad. Are the feet sticking out the bottom? They are ever so slightly. That's chilled. I'm going to go pose. I'm going to adjust so the legs are a little bit more up. That's looking cool. Lovely stuff. I'm going to adjust the hands so that they are winning on the steering wheels there. You. Okay, cool. So you can see that the puppet is slightly off to the side. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to activate the old teleporter. And we're going to just adjust it ever so slightly. There's it. There might be a slight adjustment of the X. Okay. Lovely stuff. It's looking pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfecto. But I will say that that's looking pretty damn good. Okay, sweet. So when in car is activated, our character is going to move to this position. They're going to not be collidable or movable. And not only that, but they're going to also be uh, put into a cool car seated position just like that. Alrighty. So now, friends, the next thing that we've got on the list is to make sure that um, we switch the controller sensor that we've got here and activate this controller sensor that we have over here. So by default, I'm going to go to the car logic 
And for this one, I'm actually going to go shwing, 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 force possession. And you're going to say, Mina, didn't we turn this off just a moment ago? And I say, yes. But now we're going to turn the whole car off. So now the car is not activated. We're going to add a further one. And I'm actually just going to color code this move i'm gonna make red pose is green that's fine and then i'm gonna have this one which turns the car on and simultaneously turns off our controller sensor so your imp will hop out of the puppet and sort of be inside the car itself so for this i'm going to call this keyframe car on comma puppet off sort of a thing alrighty I will connect these all now so when this is activated our controller sensor goes off the car goes on we move into position and we're having a good time <clears throat> having a good time so square I'm now inside the car and we are driving. Yoo-hoo! I've got a thousand answers. One has got to be right. I mean, friends, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, screw handbrake turns. You know, if you want to see how to do like cool handbrake turns and stuff, uh, definitely check out the earlier parts of the video. But um, yeah, it's pretty much simple. You pretty much just use a bunch of keyframes, a bunch of uh, a, a, a nice teleporter, a trigger zone. You know, a little bit of logic here and there. And you have something that you can enter very easily. But you're like, mean lad, okay, cool, bro. But uh, we saw entrance and exit. I want to be able to leave this vehicle, not be stuck in it forever. Which makes sense, because that's what cars are for, right? Vehicles getting from one point to another and then getting out. So what we're going to do there is we are going to uh, add in a little variable modifier into the car logic. And this variable modifier is going to affect, you guessed it, the in-car variable. And it's going to set it to zero. It's zero by default. So when you press circle, you're going to set in-car to zero. And of course, when car in-car is zero or false, all of this stuff is going to be deactivated. And your character is going to roam freely again. The car is going to turn off. And we're going to live our best lives. <coughs> so here we are. Me, ba me, ba me. Okay, cool. I've reached where I want to go. I'm out. So now, friends, I've shown you how to exit a vehicle. And then enter it again. Me, ba me. Screw, screw, screw. And then, of course, exit. Sorry, actually, one thing that I've neglected to actually notice is the fact that... Um, <coughs> When this uh, chap is on, when we are actually in the car, that the press square to enter is still being shown. Uh, so what we might do for that is add in a further keyframe and just deactivate this trigger zone. So we'll call this no trigger. Lots of keyframes. You can do every single one of these things with one keyframe. But I wouldn't recommend it because you might get a little bit confused as to, you know, what everything's doing. <clears throat> so, I would recommend this, friends. Handbrake turn. And we drive off the edge. Okay, sweet. So, friends, that is part one of this video, Waxed. And uh, to be honest, the entering and exit part is actually the most the most chilled part um yes i'll quickly color code color code these let's make pose blue why not let's make car on and off we can keep that as green and then no trigger will be sort of a, a bit of a yellowish how's that so now we've got lots of different colors it's looking very colorful and fun uh in summary we have a trigger zone that detects a particular tag that is external to the car's logic it is on the body of the car we have a press square to enter and when we are close enough to this tag and we press the square button it's going to set our variable which is the in car variable to one when the in car variable is one in other words true we're going to not move or collide not be movable or collidable we are going to teleport to this position on the vehicle so that it looks like we're in the seat we are going to activate our cool pose 
we are going to activate the car and deactivate our puppet and we are not going to trigger this trigger zone anymore or it's going to be turned off so that we don't have this text pop up and um, l last but not least when it comes to this stuff uh, I'm going to go to gameplay gear and I'm going to go global settings um, this depends on you but we can make it so that um, imps are not visible so that when you change from vehicle to uh, person there isn't a bit of uh, that imp popping out part which is very cool and very dreamsy but um, if you didn't want it you can of course have that too <coughs> alrighty so friends that's all the technical stuff uh, when it comes to uh, the vehicle I'm going to add a few bells and whistles in the form of uh, animations, if that's anything you're interested in. <clears throat> and it's going to work sort of uh, as follows. So we have our, our left and right, uh, which sort of uh, are activated by, you know, our analog stick and our R2 and L2 and all this sort of stuff. So all I'm going to do is add like a bit of a turning to the old steering wheel. So the steering wheel is going to turn like so. And not only that, but I'm going to add a little custom animation for our character so that they sort of turn as well. You just need to make sure that your puppet mirror is off. So this is going to be them turning left. Lovely stuff. So I'm going to rename this keyframe left. Left, left, left. And then I'm going to just copy that exact thing. I'm going to deanimate that. And I'm going to... Oh, goodness. I'm going to make it so that this turns as well. Lovely stuff. So that turns. And then this guy is going to go the other way. Lovely stuff. And that is going to be right. Now, as ever, I, I never know which one's left and which one's right. So I'm going to go with positive being right and negative being left and see what happens. Okay, so we're going, we're in the car, we're turning left, it worked, and we're turning right. If it's a little bit too, um, me. if it's like not exactly aligned there, like when I turn right, I'm a little bit off the steering wheel a bit. Um, that's not exactly what you want. Um, then I'll just make it so that this isn't so intense. Whoops. Not so intense with the turning. Just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And um, you can even add a little bit of a gradual up and down. So that when you turn, it's like you see this steering wheel turn sort of kind of slowly. And when you let go, the steering wheel comes back gradually, not instantaneously. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. Okay. But, of course, friends, this is me just having some fun. Uh, I, I recommend you adjust those things as you see fit. You might want to have different keyframes for, like, turning your steering wheel as opposed to the character. You know, adjusting and so on and so forth. Um, but I'm just here to show you how to do it. It's up to you to make something that's smooth and beautiful and amazing. Um, and I look forward to those days, friends. Uh, yes, so let me now move on to the next section. We have done the vehicle. We've done the car. It's looking good. Woohoo! But now, friends, the next step is... Animal mounts. Woohoohoo! Meow! Okay, friends, so let's start on the design for our animal mount. Uh, if you've already got your animal in mind, then you can, of course, skip ahead to the logic section. But, yes, yeah, so we're going to go into our animal. I think what I want to make is kind of like a wolf. So I'm just going to put on a, a nice mirror, go into sculpt mode. And I'm just going to start with uh, something like a longish head. That's cool. Then I'm going to add some sort of spikiness. Uh, then I'm going to go L1 in square with this little cone. And I'm going to go blend amount. And I'm just going to add a bit of, just a little bit of 
you know, like furriness, as it were. This is kind of maybe looking like a bit of a dragon too. And you can also reduce the blend amount and just have have it like, you know, individual. Ra 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 ra. Individual hair vibes. Okay, sweet. Uh, then I'm going to make the nose. Also with R1 and square, increase the blend amount again. And I'm going to create the sort of, the sort of face that we're going for over here. Goodness gracious me. This might be actually a bit more of a pig. So let's make a pig. Lovely stuff. Now let's go with, uh, let's go with that for now. And I'm just going to color it in a shade, a collection of browns, I think. Alrighty, I'll go over to brown, I'll go into paint mode, I'll switch my tool to a sphere. Then I'm going to go L1 in square and I'm going to increase it so it's soft blend. And now I'm just going to go all over the chap. Maybe re in change the size of the thing so there's a bit of variation in color. And as you can see, we've got a sort of ball. I'll maybe give it a pink nose. And there we've just got a bit of the head of our of our mount. And then I'm also going to go back into tools, stamp shape, and give it like some some black eyes. I'm going to turn off uh, soft blend, of course. I want in square to do that. And we've got a little piggy. That's very nice. Um, of course, this doesn't have to be too hectic. Uh, if the shape is a little bit off, you can, of course, remove things. It's really up to you and your particular preference. So this is just the head of our little creature. And now I'm going to work on the body. And for the body, I'm thinking kind of like a sphere. Maybe like a slightly stretched out one. I'm just going to turn off the mirror just for a split second. And turn on the grid snap. Okay, I'll go with the color brown, like a darkish brown. And now I'll go R2 and press triangle to align it to the grid. And grab this with R2 and triangle to align it to the grid. And now we've already got a system sort of going there. We've got the body, we've got the head, and that's already looking pretty cool. So just like that, I've designed sort of the the head and body of our creature um, and I mean so far it's looking pretty cool you can adjust it so the heads maybe a little bit higher that looks maybe a little bit better and um, yeah if you want if you wanted to have like a head that can go up and down so on and so forth or like bobs up and down when you move you can of course do that um, what I would recommend you do is go to gadgets get yourself a connector and grab yourself uh, not a bolt sorry but actually a ball joint Connect this, the yellow one, at the body, and then connect it to the head. And now you're going to want to put the blue one sort of somewhere in the in the head of the old chap. And then move this pivot point. Um, you might need to sort of, you might need to sort of experiment where you put it. But I mean, that's probably not too bad. It doesn't have to be ridiculous. It's just so that... Uh, there's a bit of movement in the event that you need some. We're just going to go L1 and square on the head now and make sure that it's not movable or collidable. Similarly with the body, not movable and not collidable. So now if I turn off the grid snap, we're going to see that the head can actually move in a few ways. So on and so forth. If you want to limit the amount of movement that the head has, um, you can do that too. But at the moment, when you're working with connectors, like we mentioned earlier, it's difficult uh, when you don't have your X-ray on. So what you'll do is you'll go show and hide and you'll go X-ray. Make sure your connectors are on as well, because this is sometimes turned off. So make sure that your connectors are on and your X-ray is on, and then you'll be able to see this. I want in square, and you can of course set your limits or use limits there, and you can reduce that so that when you move the head, it only moves in a certain way. Lovely stuff. 
Okay, cool. Now let's move on to the uh, four-legged part. So let's put that grid snap back on. R2, and then triangle to align it to the grid. Maybe a little bit more off the floor. Lovely stuff. Okay, so for the legs, we're not going to do anything too crazy. We're going to go into sculpt mode. We're going to go curve. We're going to make these legs um, also a sort of brownish color. Let's go over here. Uh, maybe a, maybe the same sort of round, so it sort of fits in. Um, and we're just going to change the size of it so it sort of matches. And we're going to make the legs sort of two parts. So we're going to go L1 and square. And this is going to be the sort of upper upper leg part. If it's a little bit thick, uh, you can always just reduce the size um, and stretch it out a bit more. Um, but I think that's probably pretty good for the like upper arm, as it were, or upper leg. Going to stamp that in place. And then I'm just going to make a copy of that and place it here. You can, of course, try to sort of um, hide the seam by just putting them close to each other like that. Uh, but I think for this thing, just to demonstrate the, um, uh, shall we say, the joints and how they move, I'm going to make them like fairly far apart uh, so that you can sort of see which way they're turning and so on and so forth. Alrighty. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to connectors. And um, we're actually just going to grab this with R2 and then triangle to make sure that it is aligned nicely. Then grab this and triangle as well. So we just want to make sure that these are both nice. They're both pretty big, so I'm going to make a little bit smaller. Triangle again. And they are looking good. Sweet. So now I'm going to go with my bolt. I'm going to connect this one here to the upper arm. And then this one here to the lower arm. Now, what we want these arms to do <coughs> is to move, be able to move like up and or forwards and backwards. So a bolt is the way to go, but we're just going to need to rotate this. So if we hold it, we can see it's kind of looking like a CD right now. We want to turn that a little bit. It's also a good idea to press triangle so that it's aligned to the old grid. If it's a little bit off, you can always just set this as the grid origin. That might make it a little bit easier. Align to grid, align to grid, and get this blue piece within the forearm there. Now, when you're holding this chap, you want to make sure that the circle around is looking at it like this. So it turns, it can turn as if this were a clock, like so. So that's the kind of vibe you want. Um, you can put, you can have limits on this as well, but you don't really have to worry about this now. Because we're going to make both of these non-movable. So select them both with X. Physical properties, not movable, not collidable. Lovely stuff. So it's only going to move when we tell it to. Lovely stuff. So now what we're going to do, friends, is we're going to make sure that this is set to the grid origin. So grab it with R2 and press triangle. And then we're going to copy it. And paste it over here. Whoops. Paste it over here. Then we're going to copy this one. Paste it over here. We just want to make sure that we are very much equidistant. Just make sure that that head is nice and so on. It's nice and aligned. Okay, so we just want to make sure... But those are good. That looks pretty good to me, I would say. Alrighty. Oopsie. I'm going to copy this. Sorry. Oh gosh. Okay. We'll just copy this. Does that look about right to you? Maybe a little bit over here. Lovely stuff. Okay, so our little ball that we've got over here is looking pretty sweet. Um, would you say that's about right? Hmm, probably right. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. Um, in the event that it's not perfectly right, uh, that's okay. It does look actually a little bit, a little bit off. So I might just do a quick precise move a little bit this way, a little bit that way. Cool. You can eyeball it if it's not exactly 
but yeah the gist of it and you can of course uh, fiddle with it and make sure it's nice and perfect using all the grids and the precise moves and all those sorts of things um, to ensure that it's good sweet so now what we're going to do is we're going to connect now we've connected the four arms or the upper arms and the four arms and now we're going to connect these to the body itself and we're going to do this just as before we're going to put a grid snap on uh, fairly low l1 and up on the up or down on the d-pad to adjust this we're going to go gadgets we're going to go connectors and we're going to choose uh, once again uh, bolt now you might want to make this slightly bigger cool cool put this there so this is connected here this is connected there and that's looking pretty cool so now we're going to align this to the old grid put it in the shoulder then we're going to adjust it so we want this to be able to sort of go forwards and backwards if you know what I'm saying so if I move this Oh goodness, I may have attached this incorrectly. Okay, so that's, oh goodness. Let me just go here. We need to make sure that, yeah, we need to make sure that that's not movable. And then, um, yeah, we're going to attach this here. Sorry, not a ball joint, but a motor bolt. Not a motor bolt, but just a regular bolt. Attach there, and then attach here. And now if I move this, it's going to be living its best. Okay, so I'll put this here. Attach. Use, remember to use triangle when you're doing this. Show chain. Then put this one here. Lovely stuff. And now if I try and move it, it looks like. Um, it's self-destructed. Okay, friends, so now we're going to attach these legs to the body of our little ball here. So we're going to go for a just a bolt. We're going to make sure that our grid snap is turned on. And we're just going to make sure that we can connect it uh, to the old body. So you're just going to connect one to the body and one to the sort of shoulder of the upper arm. Then you're going to put that blue one sort of fairly somewhere within the shoulder and then this one kind of maybe put the blue one a little bit lower put this pink one here so that you want to be able to see this motion don't worry if the, the top part of the arm and the bottom part aren't sort of um, moving together that's chilled for now we just want to make sure that this is looking cool which it is lovely stuff and so now we're gonna repeat this process making sure that basically just this leg is attached so if we pick this dude up it's going to be moving around lovely stuff and then we can of course go like this and group it together so now we can of course move it all together lovely stuff so that is the sort of key part of it you go x x and you group it together and then what you're going to do is go bolt, attach it there, attach it here. So one part to the body, uh, one part sort of within the upper leg, and then this purple part here, so that the circle is in, at this orientation. It's tilting like this. So then if we move it now, it's going to go, yeah, lovely stuff. Uh, and of course we're going to now continue on the other side lovely stuff arrangement arrangement lovely lovely make sure that they are grouped together 
You'll see three because, of course, it's um, the upper arm, the bottom part of the arm, and then this uh, little connector counts as the third object. Um, so, yes, shall we quickly check? Let's just grab this. That looks cool. Whoops. That's looking cool. Nice. There's some movement there. And last but not least, we're going to do the last one. Just put down a bolt as we have done. Lovely stuff. Whoops. Good vibes. And we group them together as well. Now if we pick up our piggy, we've got action. If we move one of the legs, we've got action. Oh, whoopsie. Lovely stuff. Um, so that's looking pretty cool, friends. We now have a bit of locomotion. Uh, or in terms of we have potential for locomotion with our little piggy. So now, friends, the question is, how do we make our pig able to walk and move? So it's time to give our animal mount a bit of logic. So we don't have to worry about these connectors and stuff anymore. So I'm going to show and hide, turn off x-ray, turn off connectors. We don't have to worry about them for the moment. Uh, but what we are going to do is we're going to put in some logic. And just like with the car, we need a flat surface for this to ensure that the mover's local space setting is, um, you know, not too finicky. So to get a flat object, we're just going to go sculpt mode and we're just going to insert a little square. And we're just going to group it. So we're just going to go X and X. Um, and we're just going to group these chaps together. So now if we move it around, it's looking cool. We're also going to make it so that the square is non-collidable. And at a future point, we're also going to make it invisible. So now we can move these around. And don't worry if there's a little bit of delay when we're moving it. It's just the connectors doing their job. Okay, sweet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go gadgets and input some logic. So we're going to go logic and processing and grab ourselves a microchip. And we're going to stamp that microchip down. Oh just here on the old block. It might appear slightly levitated above it, but that's perfectly chill. You just need to make sure it's surface snap with L1, and then we will be Gucci. Okay, sweet. So now what we're gonna do is, um, very much like the car vibe, so I'm not gonna go um, in too much detail over it, I'll just explain it as I go. If you want the full, most deep explanation, check out the car logic, because it's very similar. Um, okay, sweet. So we're going to go sensors input, grab ourselves a controller sensor, delete all these extra wires. We don't need to worry about those. Then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a mover, the little cube with the arrow, lovely stuff. We're going to make it so that our move speed is something like 6.6. .6. We can have our overall damping at um, something like 35 for now. We'll leave it at that. Oh, sorry. And the last thing is local space. Um, now this is why it's important to surface snap it here because if it's not surface snap to a flat object the local space will be a little bit off which isn't great so we're going to go grid snap and then we're going to point it so that X is forward so that's looking cool now how do we make something uh, be able to go forward and reverse in order to do that what we're going to do is do 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 go over to logic and processing and grab ourselves a combiner the positive value is going to be R2, in other words, moving forward. And the negative value is going to be L2, in other words, reversing. And we're going to connect the output of the combiner into the mover. This is very much just the quick version without much explanation. Okay, sweet. Uh, so now we have a system that can move forward and backwards. I'm just going to go to the imp and go remote controllable. So if I press R2, he's going to move forward and L2, he's going to move back. Um, so there was a little bit of finickiness now with these limbs, so I'm just going to make sure that they are not movable. I'm going to do this here as well, make sure these limbs are not movable. Okay, woohoo, yeah, so that's looking pretty cool. He's moving, he's living his best, whoops, he's going, so basically what we're checking here, forwards and backwards. We also picked up a little bit of a uh, little bit of the stuff. Um, to see that one of the legs was actually still set to movable. 
Um, so what you might want to do uh, in this case is quickly go to all the body parts and make sure that none of them are in fact movable. So you go I want in square, cool, that stuff isn't movable, that's looking cool. Okay, cool. So now we know that we can go forwards and that can we can go backwards. So that's looking pretty nice. But now we want to be able to turn. So in order to turn, we're going to go move as an output, grab ourselves a rotator. And now how do we make something rotate with the analog stick? We're going to get a bunch of splitters. Okay, cool, cool. So we're going to go to page three. Make sure that you get left stick local. And you'll connect it to the splitter. Then you're going to copy the splitter and get us the old X value. So the X value is our left and right. Then the positive and the negative is left specifically and right specifically. X is, of course, both of them. And the last thing we're going to do is copy this combiner. And we're going to connect positive to negative, negative to positive. Connect that to the rotation speed. Then I want in square on our rotator. And we're going to make sure that this little gizmo here is pointing upwards. Lovely stuff. So now if we go remote controller, if I turn left, I'm turning left. If I turn right, I'm turning right. And so on and so forth. Lovely stuff. So now the logic for our little piggy is, um, I mean, the gist of it is pretty much clarified here. Okay, friends, so let's turn this into a puppet that can be possessed quickly. So we're going to go controller sensor, possessable, force possession. So now we're going to see what it's like in the life of a pig. So we can turn, we can sort of run at the moment. But of course, the arms and legs, as it were, are only working as per the, um, as per the sort of physics of the movement. So we might want to do ourselves uh, a bit of an immersion and uh, animate some sort of leg movements. Now, these don't have to be too hectic. You can literally do it with just three keyframes. So the first one, the front left and the back right will sort of go forward. So instead of a grid snap, you might want to actually use a precise move. Let's so move this one forward and move this one forward. And then maybe not so far. And then this one backwards and this one backwards. Perfect stuff. Then you're going to copy this one again and copy another one and put it between them. So we have three in total. And the middle one is going to be the opposite. So this one's back. This one's forward. This one's back. This one's forward. And we'll connect them. I want an X to blend them together. Rip. Uh, and then we'll make sure that this is on loop. And they are currently going to go like this. So it's not it's not amazing. It's not the best animation ever. Um, but uh, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of movement, a little bit of action. And of course, this is going to be powered with the use of the old uh, combiner as well. So if we go like this, cha -cha 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 -cha, if we go backwards, so if we go backwards, it's not going to be working because it's not sort of, it's seeing that as like a negative value. So at the moment, these chaps are really swanging it around. So in the event that they're swinging like crazy, um, we just, once again, uh, make sure that this group is set to not movable. This group is in the body of the, the like legs. Set this group to non-movable. Set this group to non-movable. So by group, I mean literally this little group of like upper leg and lower leg. Remember, we made them into groups a little while ago. So now they will just chill. And if we're moving, we're going. If we're moving backwards, choo -choo 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 -choo, we're going for it. Lovely stuff. Um, so... At the moment, it's seeing it as a negative value, so it's not powering it. So you can make it that when it's R2 or when it's L2, it's powering it. So 
picture and not only that but you might also want to do it so that when x in other words when the the ball is turning there's a little bit of leg movement as well cha -cha -cha. or maybe just instead of x just connect it to the l so if ever there's any input into the analog there's going to be a little bit of a little bit of movement lovely stuff so there we go we've got a little ball and he's having a great time cool but now of course if we run our ball off the edge he's gonna whoop he's just gonna keep on going because at the moment he's an immovable object <clears throat> so he's not being acted on by physics he's just being um, acted upon by the mover itself okay friends so now we have a little ball that walks around and the legs are moving around and it's looking pretty cool um there's a little bit more there's a little bit more drag than i would want so i might go to the mover and increase the damping see what that does cha 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 okay that makes us move a little bit slowly so we might want to move a little bit faster um or move at the same speed but you just increase the strength Cha-cha-ching. So we're moving. And then when we come to a stop, we come sort of to a stop. It's a little bit maybe too fast. So we can then maybe adjust that to something like just the default 50. Cha-cha-cha. That's pretty cool. We go, we go, we go. And then we sort of slow down. Lovely stuff. Now, if you want the animation to uh, fade out, as it were, um... That's of course that's of course very possible. All that you're going to do is we've got a bunch of connections that are coming here towards the timeline. So what we can do is we can add a signal generator to just add a bit of smoothing. So we'll connect the left stick, L2, R2. We can delete these here, and we can just add a bit of output smoothing. So it'll have a smooth rise and a smooth fall. So even if you let go of the buttons that trigger the walk animation, um, they'll they'll take a moment to slow down. As you can see, we start walking and then I'm going to let go. And as we slow down, it takes us just a moment to readjust our feet. Just a little bit of just a little bit of added. Um, I'm not really going to say realism because this has got to be the strangest boy you've ever seen. But um, there you are. Okay, sweet. So now, friends, the next thing that we're going to move on to is making our puppet a movable object so that, for, I mean, for example, if we walk off the edge, nothing's going to happen because it's currently not a movable object. It can't go up ramps and all these sorts of things uh, because at the moment it is non-movable and non-collidable. And that's what we want. So we're going to quickly go in here and make sure that everything with two taps of X everything is sort of um, non collidable you might have to actually scope in cool non movable non collidable make sure that every individual little sculpt is non movable and non collidable I'm just gonna go over to the sculpt and I'm actually gonna make it invisible because we don't need that chap anymore lovely stuff okay so next up what we're gonna do is we're going to make ourselves basically think of it as a like a collision zone. This is what Tap Jaws taught me about um, making cars and that sort of thing, movable objects like that, um, into things that can interact with the environment. So not just a a nice like object that can go forwards and backwards and whatever we tell it, but that will actually also interact with the environment. Lovely stuff. So what we're going to do is by using the Tap Jaws's method. We're going to go and grab ourselves a sculpt into sculpt mode, put on a little grid snap, and we'll grab ourselves a little rounded cube. Now, as I said earlier, think of this as the collision zone. We can just place it sort of hereabouts so that it kind of lines up with the uh, legs, shall we say, like the little feet of the character. You want to make sure that the feet are covered. If they covered very far, then this is think of this as the the ground of your character. So if it's very low, your character is going to look like they're floating. If it's very high, then their legs are going to be kind of like in the ground. 
So try and line it up with the pretty much where the feet are. The feet of your little character. And that's looking pretty cool. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go with our cube. And we're going to go L1 and X. And we're going to do this a few times because we want to make it so that we are... Oh, well, actually, sorry. Let's just grab this again. And what we're going to do is we're going to go L1. Or sorry, just X on our, our ball group. So let's make sure that we've got our ball group. And let's make sure that all the parts of our ball are actually in one group. Lovely stuff. Let's go group. So now if I pick up my little ball, he's one piece. So they were connected by connectors and they would move together, but they weren't actually one group. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go X and X and we're going to go group again. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go to this microchip, hold it with R2, then L1, and then circle. And we're going to go out so that now we're still holding L1 and now we're going to let go of R2 and this microchip is now surface snapped to the entire puppet including this little uh, this little cube. Now we're going to go L1 and square and we're going to make it movable. So now basically what's happening is now that it is movable it is able to um, have physical objects sort of inter or it's going to be able to interact with physical objects and so on and so forth. So let's give it a bit of a, uh, a test run. So if we do this sort of business, oh, it looks like we're a little bit stuck. So what we're going to want to do is maybe move it ever so slightly up, ever so slightly. And this is something that uh, Vince Cully reminded me of. Make sure that the slidiness is nice and um, adjusted. So we're going to, when you um, have something lower, that means it's very slidey. So you don't want to have too much friction from this sort of stuff. So sure swing. Woohoo! Goosh! So, <laughs> over there I just did a little bit of a flip. But um, as you can see, if I run off the edge here, we're, we're going to fall off the edge. Which is the gist of what you want. Because before, we were just sort of running and it was a little bit crazy. Now, with, with animals, unlike cars, where you might want a little bit of sort of flippy and flippy and flippy, uh, we don't really want that with animals. When we jump off a cliff, we want to always be kind of looking straight. So what we're going to do is we're going to be going, I mean, maybe you want that, but I'll show you how to make it so that it's always upright. We're going to go to, sorry, I'm going with fast here, move as an output, grab ourselves a gyroscope. And we're going to make it pretty strong, something like 70%. Okay, sweet. So now if I run, whoopsie, ah, just rewind here. <clears throat> I'm turning, I run, I jump up. And then it's looking pretty cool, but I'm not going to sort of rotate hectically. Lovely stuff. So let's make a few more of these just to demonstrate the effect of it. But I think uh, generally speaking, we get the idea. Cool. So here we are. Okay. So if, if there's still potential for you to fall over, then you can just make it so that your gyroscope is at 100%. And that way you'll pretty much like never, never get tilted. Woohoo! Your piggy will just launch itself off into the distance. Fabulous. This does work very much more sort of nicely for cars, as you can see here, because cars have a sort of flat bottom. Um, with walkie animals like this, uh, they aren't necessarily as flat. So you might see a little bit of jitteriness. But there you go. That is what we have at the moment. If that's how you want to, if that's, if making your sort of pet movable, falling off cliffs and jumping over ramps and that sort of a thing, um, this is the way to do it. Okay, sweet. So we're just going to make this cube invisible now. Oh, sorry. It'll remain collidable, but it won't be visible. Once again, we make it so that the whole group, including the cube, um, is movable. And you must also make sure that you take the logic out and make sure that the logic affects the entire group. So normally it might be a few layers into the group. So you put this in here, you pull the microchip out, and you just surface snap it onto the whole thing. And then it'll be good. 
Sweet friends, so we now have a, a boar that is movable. Yeah, he's able to run over all these hills, and he can also run off. <clears throat> so that's looking cool. We can now be affected by gravity and all these sorts of things. And now, friends, last but not least, we're going to do the animal mount section. Okay, friends, so here I've got our blank basic puppet with no new logic in. And so let's get stuck in. So first of all, we're going to want to uh, go onto our little animal mount that we've got over here. And we're going to want to put a tag onto them. So I'm going to put a tag right on the nose. And it's important that this tag is not uh, inside their microchip. It's got to be external to that. I'm just going to say mount. Lovely stuff. Now I'm going to create a trigger zone. The trigger zone is going to look for tags and specifically the mount tag. Uh, where is it going to be sort of looking for it? It's going to be here by the pelvis and sort of outwards from there. I think we'll also just quickly make our pig a little bit smaller so that it's kind of just a little bit more. Maybe that sort of a size. That sort of vibe. Maybe a little bit too small. Cool. A very big pig. Pig is actually huge. Um, okay, sweet. So that's going to look for a trigger zone, which is mount. And when it has done so, it's going to give us a little text display. The text display is going to say... It's going to say, press square to ride. Sweet, and that's going to appear sort of centrally and slightly up over here. So it's going to be press square to ride. Now, when our trigger zone detects that mount is nearby and we press square, so let's go over to the logic and processing, grab ourselves an AND gate. So, when our trigger zone detects mount and we press square in the controller sensor, it's going to do something. What is it going to do? It's going to make it so that we are now riding the mount. So we're going to go variable. We're going to get a fresh one. And we're going to call this one mounted. The minimum value is going to be 0. And the max will be 1. So in other words, false and true. So currently, are you mounted? No. 0. False. But when you're near and you press square, we want to make it so that you are mounted. So we'll add a variable modifier, connect that here. And then we're going to go name a variable, mounted, set to 1. Lovely stuff. Now, when we are mounted, it's going to activate a few things. One of them is a teleporter. The teleporter is going to move us towards which tag? the mount tag and it's going to match target position and orientation so you'll activate orientation another thing that we're going to do is take a keyframe and we're going to make it so that our character is not movable or collidable so when we teleport to the pig's position they're not going to be sort of uh, you know all over the place so we're going to connect this we're actually just going to turn this on quickly and see what happens. So at the moment, as you can see, the character is sort of by the pig. I'm just going to make them non-movable for a second. Okay, sweet. So the character is by the pig currently riding on his nose. So the way that we adjust the position is we make sure that the game is playing with R3 so that you're in your position. And then you grab this gizmo and you just move it. You grab it with R2. And it doesn't look like the gizmo moves, but as you can see, of course, your character is moving. So we're going to make it so that the character is about there-ish, maybe a little bit further back. So this is a cool little trick. Make sure that you're play that the game is playing, and that you are, of course, uh, that your teleporter. You're looking at the teleporter. Cool. So this one we'll call this little keyframe. We'll call no movement slash colliding. That's very cool. And then, of course, we're also going to want to have a pose. 
So let's press R3 to make sure that we're playing. And then let's put our character in a particular pose. We'll put on puppet mirror. And we'll make sure that the old legs are in a good riding position. And then um, maybe the chest will be down a bit and sort of holding on to the pig's hair, the boar's hair, or the ears, or whatever it might be. And of course the, the head will be up. So that's looking pretty cool. We'll call this keyframe Pose. Lovely stuff. This is actually a lot of fun, I'm telling you. So, when this is active, we're going to be on our pig and we're going to be posing. I'll maybe adjust the pose ever so slightly because the hands are a little bit concealed within the sculpt. So I'll just sort of do it like so. Lovely. If you find that the puppet's a little bit too this way or that, you can just adjust it. There's it. That's pretty good. Cool. So we are now atop our little piggy. And, um, I mean, that's pretty cool, if you ask me. Looks pretty great as is. And um, we also need to actually activate our little piggy. So, by default, our piggy is going to be possessable and force possession. But we want to make it so that this is deactivated at first. Then we want to put down a little keyframe. And in this keyframe, we're going to activate this microchip, but also deactivate the controller sensor of our puppet. So the, the pig, as it were, is turned on, and our character is turned off. Their sort of logic is turned on and off. And we'll call this one mount on. On. Puppet off. Sweet vibes. But not only that, friends, we also want to make sure that our press square to ride isn't showing up when we're actually already riding. So the last keyframe will deactivate this trigger zone. You can, of course, do all of these things in one keyframe, but I don't recommend it. Because, of course, as I've said earlier, you want to make sure you know what everything does. No trigger. That's cool. Okay, sweet. So I haven't connected these uh, yet. I just wanted to show you what it's going to be like when we press square. But now we can connect them. So when mounted equals to 1, we just have to connect it to the current value. We will connect all of these ports. You hold L1 if you want to connect all of them simultaneously with R2. Okay, sweet. So when I'm close, then I will be able to press square to ride. Shwang. And now I'm freaking riding my pig. Let's go, piggy. Okay, so I've turned off uh, the movable thing so that it wasn't juddering too much. But we can, of course, turn that back on. Square to ride. Let's go, piggy. Pig rider. Pig rider, yeah. So, the reason that my pig is juddering so intensely is because the uh, the old gyroscope is a little bit too strong. So I might increase damping on it a little bit. And then hopefully the pig won't be too juddery. Oh, it's even more juddery. Okay. Let's reduce the strength of the gyroscope to maybe something like 49, 50, whatever. Oh. Now oh, it's flying itself. Okay. Maybe, maybe let's g deactivate the gyroscope for a second there. Yeehaw! Oh, okay, no, the gyroscope's important. We're just messing around with it now. Okay. Ch -ch -ch -ch. <laughs> Not enough juice on the gyroscope. We're adjusting. We're checking things out as we go along. I just... We can have it at 100%. I just don't want that juddering to be too intense. Okay, 75 is pretty good. Ugh. Okay, so long as you don't go over something too intense. Okay, let's go with let's go with 80. 
That's lovely. Look at that. Okay, sweet friends. So now we don't have too much of that judderiness. We've got a nice animal mount. Do, 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 do. Now you can you can also make it so that um, uh, you add a little bit of bells and whistles. So when you're moving, um, not only will the the old piggy be sort of moving his legs, but you can make it so that the character is also you know jostling around just a little bit. You can add just a little bit of you know just a bit of a oh you you'll want to turn off the puppet mirror. Just a little, little bit of this, you know, a little bit of swage. Line those up nicely. Three copies. Then this one will go in the other direction. Not too far. Alrighty, and then we'll blend them together. And so now, when I get on my little piggy, woo. There's just a little bit of le mouvement, um, and yeah, you can you can pretty much mess with this as you as you see fit. You can even be like swing, add a little bit of like a bump to it, you know, like you move the pelvis up a bit, and it'll go like jing jing. Okay, maybe not maybe not that. There's a little bit too much, a little bit too much leg movement. So maybe not the pelvis. Maybe you sort of move up the feet. You know what I'm saying. You you kind of mess around to see what what gives the most realistic vibe. Okay, not so much because it's kind of doing a little bit of. I'm not sure if it's IK or FK. I'm not sure if that's gonna do anything. Yeah, okay. It looks kind of a little bit squeezy. So don't worry too much about the legs. But if you can do that body vibe, that's cool. So now I'm riding a piggy. And of course, I can also ride a car. But we also want to dismount our piggy. So to do that, that's easy peasy. We go into our, I'm just going to call this mount logic. We go into our mount logic. And we want to add a variable modifier. You can guess what this does. It goes mounted and it sets it to zero. And this will be activated by the circle button. So now I go to my mount. I ride it. I press circle. And I leave him. He does seem to be... Um, oh goodness. He does seem to be gliding a bit. Um, we did this with a car, but we haven't done this with a pig. You might want to add um, another, uh, just sort of remove the damping on these, um, and add a advanced mover with no movement whatsoever, but just some damping, um, which should hopefully make it a little bit, make it a little bit less um, crazy. Maybe make it more crazy. It'll come. To, it'll come to a halt eventually. Okay, so there's our little piggy, and um, oh, it's because the gyro is turned off when he's not there. Okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll attach the gyro to be external to him. Okay. Do 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 do. Sweet. Okay, sweet. So now it's jumping time. I'm going to go over how to make your mount have the ability to jump. It's not too crazy. I'm going to go into animate, grab us a timeline, put it down just there. Then I'm going to get the X button, press L1 and square on the timeline. And I'm going to connect X to the power. And I'm going to connect X to restart timeline. I'm going to set playback mode to once. Now I'm going to go into the timeline and make it pretty short, just like a second or so. And then we're going to go into gadgets and grab ourselves a mover. So this mover is going to be what makes us move upwards. 
Now, when you jump, you only really sort of accelerate into the air for a very short amount of time. So I'm going to make it like like even less than a third or even a quarter of a second. Now I'm going to go strength 100, and I'm going to make the distance something, or the speed rather, forward speed about 2.4, let's say. Then you're going to want to put on a grid snap. And we're going to move this arrow so that it's pointing directly upwards. And you don't have to worry about local space. We're going to leave it on scene space because up is always in the same direction. Lovely stuff. Okay, cool. So let's try it out. We get on our little dude. And if I jump, zing, zing, as you can see, he does a nice little jump. You can, of course, um, add like a different animation for when they do the jump, um, which is, of course, super easy. But now, friends, I want to do a little bit of movement tweaks because, as you can see at the moment, the way that the damping works and stuff, it makes it so that the the mount kind of works a bit like a car that's like sliding around, you know, when you like drift in a car. And that is very cool when you're in the car itself. But when you're on an animal mount, that's not exactly the vibe that you're going for. Also something, because I made the um, collision square that we made um, very slidey, when you stop accelerating, you're still going to keep going for a while, even though the old feet aren't moving. So what I'm going to do to fix that, friends, is... So we have a few movement things that we want to change. And first, I'm going to go with the slidiness. So I'm going to go show and hide, turn off preview and visibility, so we can see that collision square. And we're going to go to physical properties. And we made our friction 0% so that we could move around very nicely. But we're actually going to press triangle on it and set it to its default friction. So now by default, the sculpture is going to have normal friction. And in that sort of situation, it's not going to slide around or move very nicely. So what we're going to do to have a bit of a middle ground between slidiness and not slidiness is add a little keyframe. And this keyframe is going to make friction 0. And the way that we do this is so that when we're moving, there isn't friction. But when we stop moving, in other words, we let go of L2 or R2, whatever it might be, then it is going to um, increase our friction and we're going to come to a, a halt. So I'm going to say reduce friction. Reduce friction. And I'm also going to create a slight power up and power down. So that gives the sensation of speeding up and slowing down um, and not sort of just like an abrupt difference. And then I think this will be powered by, shall we say, when we are pressing R2 or L2. That seems cool. So now when I'm pressing R2, I'm going off into the distance. I can even jump. But if I stop, as you can see, we sort of come to a halt, which is very nice. So... We've gone over how to do a jump. I'm just going to call this jump. And so you can cool. And then we've got our reduce friction. So this just makes it so that we stop a little bit more realistically and we aren't sliding around and, you know, all that sort of business. And now the last of the movement tweaks that we're going to make is with the problem of our ability to Tokyo drift. Like even, even now, as you can see, um, our pig is sliding around like it's a streetcar. Um... And if you want to use this to do drag races, that's of course perfect. But we want to have this a little bit more of a realistic uh, mount feel, less of a car feel. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our mover. We're going to go damping 100%. And we're going to see here, okay, cool. In this situation, why is the sort of left-right movement? You can, of course, adjust it so that it's, whoops, so that it's Z, but I'm just going to leave it like this. So whichever one is pointing to the, if you look at the pig and you see Y is pointing to the left, then you're going to be like, okay, cool, cool. Whichever one that is, I'm going to damp it in Y and make that 100%. Overall damping 100%. And now we shall see that when we turn, the piggy actually goes along with the turn. And there isn't like some crazy drifting. I'm putting in the exact same inputs. But as you can see, it's a lot more realistic and a lot less crazy sliding around. And I can come to a complete stop. And I can jump. Weehee! Yoo-hoo! Wahoo! Alrighty, friends. So, there you have it. That's a little bit of the uh, the mount business. And, um, yeah, it's really as simple as that. And, you know, 
adding extra things onto this is pretty chilled. That, that'll generally be like in the form of, you know, adding cool new animations or adding a tail that sort of bobs back and forth and, you know, maybe your mount has the ability to fly. In the event that you want to do that, check out my, my flight video. And friends, actually, I've also noticed that if we let go of R2, we'll see that because our friction is set to zero, we can't actually turn. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that reduce friction. And we're going to make it so that it's also affected by the left stick. So now, for example, if I go shw shw shwing, and I'm standing still and I want to turn, I can turn. So because friction was set by zero and I wasn't using the reduce friction on it, um, the turning wasn't working. So that's just a little extra connection that you add to the reduced friction there. And that's looking lovely. But uh, yes, friends, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, this isn't like too insanely hectic on Thermo. There's a few connectors here and there. Um, but generally speaking, like if we go and check out our Thermo readings at the moment, it's more my graphics memory that's getting chowed. And that'll 100% be because of the sculpts. But um, gameplay memory is pretty chilled. Uh, the most expensive thing, as I sort of mentioned, was connectors. So there's a few of them. Uh, as you can see, if we just go connectors and then x-ray, there's quite a few connectors in the pig. There's a few connectors uh, in the, the wheels, but since they don't turn, you could actually delete those. And um, yeah, friends, so that's pretty much all there is to it. Okay, sweet friends, so now I've consolidated all the logic um, from those two puppets into the single puppet. And you can pretty much just copy paste it. The only thing that you'll need to change is uh, the poses so that they affect the new puppet, puppet, the new puppet that uh, the logic has been copied into, um, and as well as the trigger zones, just making sure that they're in the right place. But um, there you go. So you can drive around in your car. And um, not only that. But you can grab your pig and head over to your car, jump out of your pig, jump right into your car, and then, you know, head off and go to work. Um, so I think uh, all in all, it's worked out pretty nicely, friends. And it's actually been super duper fun. So thank you so much for sticking around uh, through, throughout this video. Thank you for the support. Um, it can be really tough to figure out all the things in life and post these videos regularly. So I really appreciate your support and checking them out and asking for new things and voting in the polls, leaving comments, all those sorts of things. It, uh, I really appreciate it, friends. I'm looking forward to the next tutorial. Um, and I'm also kind of just, I really enjoyed this one. So thank you for all those who suggested it and um, asked for it. It's, um, it's been a lot of fun. And I hope that you have some fun with this too. I look forward to all the awesome creations that you're going to make. Yahoo! And yes, friends, thank you once again, as ever, for your support. It means the most. Y'all are the best. Thank you for sticking through this super long video. Shushwang. And I shall catch you. Me. Skrrr. On the flip-flop. Flip-flop. Peace out. Mm -hmm.